So as a physiotherapist, one of the most common injuries we will need to assess at the knee is an anterior cruciate ligament injury. In this video, we're gonna take you through some of the key objective tests you can use to get to the diagnosis. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So in this video, we're gonna take you through three crucial tests that you can use to assess for integrity of the ACL. And those are the Lachman's test, the anterior draw test, and the pivot shift test. But first of all, we need to think about the subjective signs that we might listen to that might lead us to believe that ACL is torn that make us use those tests in practice. So what are the key subjective signs for an ACL injury? So the first sign to listen out for is a trauma or mechanism of injury. In particular, we know that 70% of ACL injuries occur due to a non-contact pivoting movement most commonly seen on a sports field. So for example, when your patient is changing direction or is decelerating when sprinting. The second is a massive swelling, an acute hemarthrosis at the knee. We know that the ACL has a really good blood supply and therefore when it ruptures, it bleeds everywhere. So of course, listen for if your patient describes that they had loads of swelling immediately after the injury, and of course, look for this swelling on your assessment as well. The next is a feeling of giving way, functional instability, because if the ACL is ruptured, it's not providing the stability we need at the knee. So listen for your patient saying that they have a buckling sensation at the knee when they're changing direction, for example. And of course, there's if your patient heard an audible pop after the injury. Now, whilst a pop does not come with every single ACL injury, if your patient does report a pop, we need to rule an ACL injury in until we can effectively rule it out. So with those in mind, let's move on to the tests themselves, starting with a Lachman's test, which is thought to be the best special test to use for diagnosing an ACL tear with a sensitivity of 85% and a specificity of 94%. So how do we do this test? Well, first of all, we position the patient by having them lie flat on their back on the examination table and the knee being tested should be relaxed and bent to approximately 20 to 30 degrees. I normally ensure this by placing my own knee underneath that of the patient's, meaning that my hands are also free to control the test. Then where do we put our hands? Well, we stand beside the knee that we're testing and we place one hand on the patient's thigh firmly just above the knee joint to stabilize the femur. This hand is often referred to as the stabilizing hand and crucially I do this making sure that my thumb and index finger can feel the joint line of the knee so that it can feel for movement during the test. My other hand is grasped around the back of the calf with my thumb on the tibial tuberosity. From there, we perform a smooth anterior forward force of the tibia on the femur with our lower hand. And the idea is to move this in a slow and controlled movement to start with. And then I repeat this test with a faster, more jerking movement. I like to do both so I can feel if there's a difference between the two. Here I'm observing and feeling for the degree of forward movement or translation of the tibia and the quality of the end feel. So what are we looking for as a positive result? Well, the first is an excessive forward translation of the tibia on the femur, suggesting that the ACL is torn as it's not stopping the tibia from moving too far forward. The second thing and crucial to note is a soft end feel. This means we do not have a feeling of a clear tug or end point when we're performing the test. Once again, because the ACL is torn and is not allowing that restriction to stop the tibia moving too far forwards. And of course, we can only be sure of these things when we compare the injured leg to the non-injured leg too. So next we have the anterior draw test, suggested to have a sensitivity of 49% and a specificity of 58%. So how do we do this test? Well, we have our patient lying on their back on the examination table with the knee being tested flexed to around 90 degrees. The patient's foot should be anchored by the examination sitting on their foot to prevent the foot and leg moving during the test. Where do we put our hands? Well, we sit right in front of the patient close to their knee and we put both of our hands with either thumb either side of the patella tendon at a position where we can feel the joint line between the femur and the tibia. Both of our fingers on the hands should be wrapped around the back of the calf. 
So we perform the test by gently pulling the tibia forwards anteriorly upon the femur. And we can achieve this by leaning backwards a little during the test whilst trying to keep our arms firmly still. So from here we observe and feel for the amount of movement of the tibia in relation to the femur and we're also feeling for end feel, the quality of the end point of the test. So what is the positive result? Well in a healthy knee there should be a firm end point to the test with an end feel that is firm with minimal movement of the tibia on the femur. With a positive anterior draw test indicating a potential ACL injury, we might find that there is increased movement of the tibia on the femur and you may also feel a soft end point just like we did with the Lachman's test. Once again, this can only be achieved by comparing the injured leg to the non-injured leg. So the final one we'll talk to you about is the pivot shift test. You may not have heard of this before, it has a sensitivity of 24%, which is naturally very low, but it has a really high specificity of 98%, meaning that if this test is positive, it's very good at ruling an ACL injury in. So how do we perform the test? Well, the patient is positioned lying flat on their back on the examination table, and we need to make sure that the patient is comfortable and knows what we're going to do in order to perform the test. So with our handling, we're going to stand beside the knee being tested. We place our lower hand on the distal medial tibia and our upper hand on the lateral side of the lower leg. So from here, how do we perform the test? Well, we start with the patient's knee in full extension and then with our hands, we're going to slowly flex the knee to around 30 degrees of flexion. As we flex the knee, we're going to apply a valgus or inward force to the knee using our hand, which is on the lateral leg. And at the same time, we're going to internally rotate the tibia with our hand that is holding the distal medial tibia. As we do this, as we move the knee from extension towards flexion, we should watch or feel for a jolt or a shift or a clunk that may occur typically around 30 degrees of flexion. This occurs because the tibia is reducing back onto the femur because the ACL is torn. So a positive result, a positive pivot shift test occurs when we feel that noticeable jolt or clunk as the tibia reduces on the femur around 30 degrees of flexion, indicating an ACL tear. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it helps your ACL testing. If you've enjoyed it, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads of brilliant resources for physios on our YouTube channel at Clinical Physio and on our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com. Brilliant for those looking to improve their clinical skills. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.